Okay, today I want to talk about Sharrows and a particular area that I'd like to see Sharrows placed on my commute. Sharrows are a road sign painted on the road they indicate that a person on a bike may be present in the lane. They are generally used on roads signed for 35 miles per hour or less. They can also be used in turn lanes since most turns require you to slow down in the execution of the turn. They're a reminder that cyclists may use the full lane. Their positioning is also important. They should be positioned in the center of the lane to indicate to cyclists their proper riding position. There are beneficial in instances where a cyclist rides the road may not seem to be as obvious to motorists or an area where motorists may feel entitled to act aggressively towards people on bikes. They are not required in all areas where a person on a bike has rights to use the full lane. Let's look at an instance where Sharrows might make sense. Okay, here I am in the bike lane on my way home. Um, this actually is, uh, those dash marks are for cars to make the, to enter into this uh, right turn only slip lane. You can see there's fences along the right hand side of the road that create bad sight lines for cars pulling out and for me to see them too. So I stay further out into the lane now this red pickup truck comes up on me kind of fast and it actually kind of spooked me. I didn't know what their intent was, but they they uh, they held back, which I appreciated. And we made it on through the, uh, the turn and everything was good. So now I'm going to show about how much delay that was for them uh, making it through that turn. So again, fences bad sight lines and they come up on me pretty quick. But you'll see this is about 12 seconds uh, traveling at 17 miles an hour. So it really wasn't that much delay. So here in this clip, again, same exact route. Uh, again, fences, bad sight lines, a school bus going to come up behind me here and there is not enough room for me to be even if i was on the shoulder to be going through this turn while i have a curb on the left and the pedestrian on, or curb on the right and a pedestrian on the left so there's not enough room for the school bus and me so just stay out into the lane and the school bus actually held back pretty good didn't get right on my tail allowed me to make it through the turn and I appreciated that. So again, get over, let them make their pass. So it's vehicles like that that really make that turn really dangerous for cyclists. So here in the next clip, we're going to um, show you the my alternate. If I don't want to go through the slip lane and using the bike lane, this is my alternate to get to where I want to be. So I have to come down this road, make a left-hand turn, and get onto a bike path. I'm just going to go ahead and speed up through the bike path part. This is kind of show you. It is kind of a nice little path. Um, this is actually where it starts. It's the northern termination of the Denver-Rio Grande Trail in uh, northern Utah. So you see it's nice and green right now, which is nice. And it's uh, usually the the wind isn't bad on this trail either. But um, here in a second, we're going to pop out onto the road and continue down the uh, to, to head straight towards the um, the slip lane. So this road, the lanes are really crazy wide. Um, but I still stay a few feet out from the curb because I don't want uh, any surprises in the lane or anybody turning into me or, or making any pullouts from those driveways. So I'm going to get down the road here and get into the regular traffic lane. I notice that there's no cars behind me for a ways, but I still don't want any surprises. So this is really the safest position to be in. Um, the road is going to narrow right here. Still, I don't want to be on that shoulder because you see like that car just pulled out of that driveway. If you're too far over, people aren't really watching. So right here turns into two lanes. Go ahead and get into the right or the right most straight through lane because that's my destination. And come up to the light. And you'll see 
some traffic coming from the rear. Uh, again, I'm going to speed up through this uh, light sequence. But you'll watch the cars will just kind of stack up in that uh, left hand, the left hand straight lane. Um, but I do end up with one car that pulls over, gets in behind me. But you can see they give me some space, which I appreciate. So go straight through the intersection. Now I have to pay attention to that slip lane because people come real fast through that slip lane. But there was no traffic, so I was able to just get over rather quickly and let everyone pass me. So again, and this is actually not a bad road to cycle on. Uh, once you get down here a little further, it opens up, uh, has a decent shoulder that you can use. And uh, again, the traffic's 50 miles an hour. So I'm going to do that, do the same route that you just witnessed down the road. Going to get into the lane and then we're going to travel straight through the intersection. Okay, so I'm going to go straight through this intersection. Uh, a car is coming up behind me, but um, I can't get over because there's a car in that slip lane who's hesitant about whether they should go or not. So I wave them past. They pass. I get over. Um, again, this is not a bad way to negotiate this type of intersection. But again, you still have to watch out for those cars coming so quick. Next clip. This didn't happen probably the way that I hoped it would happen. So again, we see bad sight lines. We've got all this cross traffic. And then these, car, these trucks all are trying to beat me through. Um, this last one... Eh, it was okay, but still, I, I think that if we had Sharrows in this lane, that it might tip people off to realize that there might be a bike in this lane. So, thanks for watching. Uh, have a great day, and uh, we'll talk to you next time. Thanks. Bye.